Bang. <laughs> what a great result. I am so happy with that. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the channel, friends and family. Today, I think we have our last major DIY episode for the uh, Autopilot 136 build. It's probably the simplest of all the builds that we've had to do so far, but it's also the most daunting because it involves drilling a bunch of holes in the hull of the boat, which is not a thing that anybody's ever comfortable doing. That's right, we are installing our footwell lights. Let's go. Since I'm working in my garage, the audio for the footage was garbage, so I'll be narrating most of this video via voiceover. What I'm showing you here is that we're working with uh, 3 quarter inch 12 volt IP68 uh, marine grade running lights. These each draw about one and a half watts worth of power. They are super easy, being only a two wire design, uh, nothing fancy, just a sealed LED with a plastic grommet on the outside edge. All parts used for this portion of the build are going to be in the uh, link description. Now, I went with orange because supposedly it's a color that mosquitoes are not attracted to. It's always a good idea to validate your measurements before starting to cut anything, so here I am ensuring that the holes for these lights, in fact, need to be 3 quarter inch in diameter. These actually are 3 quarters of an inch, good job Amazon. When it comes to making measurements in situations like this, I prefer to use a tailor's tape measure. The work isn't extremely precise and the ability to flex the measuring tape really makes it easier to use. Highly recommend. When you're figuring out where you're going to put your lights, you're going to want to pick points on the boat that are symmetrical as places to measure from, meaning they exist in the same spots on both sides of the boat. That way you can easily choose uh, positions that will end up looking symmetrical and clean with the finished product. Now in this case, I chose the end of the plate where the steering rails mount to the inside of the hull. One area I knew I wanted lights was mounted up near the trolling motor since I know that's an area where I might have issues out on the water. I went about 10 inches from the pedal mount towards the bow and about two and a quarter inches up from the seam in the gunnel. I mask the area where I'm going to be working with tape so I don't have to worry about leaving marks on the hull. Uh, I mark the location of the hole, then I drill it to three quarters of an inch with a stepping bit. Uh, I do a quick validation that uh, three quarters is in fact the size that I want, and then I repeat the process seven more times because I'm running a total of eight lights. Liquid patience. Well, all right, the holes are all drilled and now we gotta fish the wires. We're gonna do that using a neodymium magnet. Pretty simple procedure here. If you don't already have a neo magnet, I recommend that you get one. They are super fun, great for stuff like this and also for magnet fishing. Uh, I insert a small metal object, in this case it's a bolt, with string wrapped around it into the hole using a weaker magnetic rod. I then move the neodymium magnet around on the outside of the hull until it finds that bolt. This allows me to pull out the weaker magnetic rod. Now from there, I just slide the neo magnet up the hull until it gets to a spot where I can reach the bolt via an access point. Works every time. Pretty simple operation from here, you just tie off that string to some 18 gauge wire and pull it through the hole. Once it's through, you cut off your excess and tape off your wire so that it doesn't fall back inside the hole. That keeps you from having to do it all over again. Okay, so now all the holes are drilled, everything is fished, wires are run, taped up. The next step that we're going to look at here is connecting lights to the wires themselves. Then we're going to silicon the back of the fixture before we push them into the holes. And then that's going to be that. until we get. For this portion of the build, we're going to be using solder seal wire connectors. It's my first time messing with them and they seem pretty awesome. It's a solder joint, butt connector, and heat shrink sleeve all in one. All you have to do is strip your wires, stick them in the ends, and then hit the whole thing with the heat gun. The heat melts the solder, and then the marine grade heat shrink seals the connection on both sides. Make sure you're careful using heat gun around the hull of your kayak. 
You just apply some silicone around the edges of the hole, then all you have to do is press the light in. Now those lights have lettering on the top that says top to help make sure you orient them all in the same way. Make sure you clean up all of your excess silicon. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Everything has been fished. All of the connections have actually been made on the hard part of the boat. The next step is to drill holes in a box. You can put away your heat gun, you can put away your crimpers, you can put away all that good stuff because we don't need them anymore. At this point, you only need a ruler and a drill bit and yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Lesson learned from previous builds, measure out and cut your holes in the box first. In this case, we're doing 10 holes. That's one for the line that will come from the primary switch box we built in the previous video, and eight for the individual lights. That leaves us one hole as a spare for future expansion, just in case we want to run a light to the back of the boat or something like that. Now, notice the lid is on while I drill the holes. These boxes are tough, but they can crack under a lot of pressure. Keeping the lid on helps keep the boxes square while you cut the holes and prevents cracking. After drilling, pop off the lid and make sure you check your ring gasket to ensure it's installed correctly. Each of these holes is gonna have its own waterproof gland. There should be plenty left over from the previous build of the switching box. I believe 20 come in a pack. You're gonna use 10 of those here. Inside the box, we're just gonna use T-connectors onto the line that provides main feed power. You're gonna feed each one of your light wires through one of the glands. You're gonna split that wire and then crimp on blade connectors. Make sure that your connectors are properly sized for the gauge of wire that you select for your project. Now you're gonna push in your main feed wire. You gotta make sure it's long enough to reach your switching box. You want there to be enough slack so that you can pull the junction box out of the hull if you ever need to work on it after the install is done. Once you're sure you've got enough feed wire, clamp down the gland to keep the wire from slipping back out of the box, then split the positive and negative wires. The T-style connectors aren't the most reliable things in the world, but since this box is gonna be immobile, waterproof, and secured to the hull, I am confident that they're gonna be fine. I found it helpful to alternate the directions the T-connectors were facing, two to the left, then two to the right, and then repeat that up the chain. You can seal off the ends of the wire with wire caps once they're all done. Now all you have to do is plug the blades into the T-connectors. You may find that your blades aren't centered after crimping. Just bend them into place with a flat-bladed screwdriver. Remember, red to red and black to black. All that's left at this point is to connect the junction box to the switching box. These holes are left over from our previous build. I couldn't include footwall lights in the previous video because I was still waiting on some parts. Just feed your main wire up through the hole that we already made and pull through enough slack to let you do the work. I secure my switching box to the side of my hole using heavy duty Velcro. It holds securely, but it lets me remove the box when I need to mess with it. I highly recommend doing that. All we're gonna do here is feed the line into the designated gland on the side of the switching box. Then we're gonna connect the red wire to the appropriate switch and the black wire to the grounding bus. The red wire is gonna require a quick connector. Uh, I prefer to heat shrink those, so I guess I lied to you. You still need a heat gun. I just made do with a blowtorch. Button everything back up and reconnect the power from the accessory battery. If you don't like loose wires all over the place, go ahead and reopen the access hatch in the hull, do your cable discipline. Uh, I secured mine to the wall with double-sided tape. As you can see here, everything is installed nice and clean. The only question is, will it work? All right, we'll do a quick walk around. Leading up to the moment of truth. We have the power pack. We have the seat, we have the system running, we have the working fish finder, power to the trolling motor, navigation lights, coming around, the working voltmeter, USB ports, and all we have to do, we can go from this angle, or you can go from this angle. Here we go. Bang. 
<laughs> oh man. I'm so happy with that. I am so happy with that. <laughs> what a great result. Plenty bright. Not too much, not too little. And if I want to turn it on or off, I can hit the nav lights. Until the fish finder. And ah, that's gonna take me a little while to figure out how to do that one. Oh, that's easy. I just gotta reach underneath my seat. Easy enough. Lights are in the way. They're all low profile. I can't kick them. If I do, it's not gonna hurt anything. I've got plenty of light up by where the motor sits. Outstanding. Well, Fritzy family, I gotta tell you, I could not be more thrilled with the way that everything turned out. Um, I feel like I'm gonna be safer. I feel like I'm gonna be better prepared. I feel like I now have the kayak that I've always wanted. And the fact that we did it all ourselves, man, I just, I can't tell you how proud that makes me. I really hope that you had as much fun as I did on this journey. I hope that you learned as much as I did. I hope you liked. I hope you subscribed. I hope you shared. I hope you tell everybody that uh, there's no reason to be intimidated by projects like this. We can we can do these things ourselves and in a lot of circumstances save money while we're doing it. Anyway, that's going to be all for this particular project. Remember, it's never too late to care again.